Early in the morning, our main character, Maggie, is working out while watching a TV show. She finishes her workout and goes down to the kitchen where she greets her mother who is glued to the window, staring at a man who's tending to her yard. Maggie asks her mom who the guy is, and her mom says his name is Rick, a widower she met who loves tending to yards so she asked him to fix Maggie's. Gary, Maggie's son, comes in the kitchen and greets them. Seconds later, Maggie's daughter, Emma, also comes in. She reminds both of them to have breakfast before leaving for school. Maggie reminds Emma that Gary has a basketball game later today that they will watch. Gary asks if his dad is coming to the game and Maggie mentions he said he will come, to which Emma comments that their dad always says he will show up, but never does. Just before they leave, Emma sees her grandma fixing her hair before going out to hand Rick breakfast. It seems that her grandma has taken a liking to Rick. Maggie owns a bakery called Sweet Sensations. She manages it with her assistant Devin. They have both been hoping to get on the Make It, Bake It, Cake It show, the one Maggie was watching earlier today, in hopes of growing their brand's exposure as they are planning on opening a second location. Maggie's ex-husband, David, walks in informing her he will be out of town for work. Maggie mentions Gary's upcoming game but David says he has to miss it. Maggie agrees to cover for him but reminds him that he should tell Gary he won't be able to come. Before leaving, he comments the bakery looks nice, saying he's glad they decided to open it up. Devin tells Maggie that she has to remind him that it is Maggie's bakery and not his. Maggie is walking to the school gym while texting on her phone. She accidentally drops her keys and bends to pick it up but bumps head on with the man in front of her who was about to help her pick up the key. The man turns out to be Michael, the father of Gary's best friend, Will. They both laugh at what happened. Michael's phone rings and excuses himself while also asking Maggie to save him a seat. During the game, Maggie notices Emma looking around and knows that she's looking for her crush, Zach. Will asks Gary if his dad is coming and Gary tells him he said he will. Gary also asks Will if his dad will watch, and he says his dad never misses a game. Gary looks discouraged upon not seeing his dad by the bleachers. The game ended and unfortunately, their team lost. Michael asks Maggie if they want to go with them to get pizza and Maggie happily agrees. Michael and Maggie sit at a table while watching their kids hanging out. She comments that Will looks like he's doing better after his mother's passing. Michael agrees, saying it gets a little easier for them every passing year. She also notices that he's no longer wearing his wedding ring. He says Will and him agree to find ways to move on and removing his ring is one step to do so. Back at home, Gary is feeling frustrated about his dad missing his game again. Maggie tries to defend him but Gary tells her she doesn't have to make excuses for him. At school, Emma tells her friend how she hopes she gets Zach as her lab partner, but it turns out that her partner is the new kid, John, who shyly waves at her. Zach approaches and they greet each other. Zach says it's too bad they aren't lab partners but tells Emma they could instead hang out sometimes and says he will text her, making Emma flutter with happiness. It's Friday night and Maggie is researching for some cake inspirations. She calls Devin but she reminds her that it's their night off, also reminding Maggie that she should be doing something fun instead of working. Maggie then closes her laptop and decides to follow Devin's advice. Maggie's idea of having fun is cleaning up the house and organizing things, so she plays some music and dances around while cleaning. She hears a knock on the door and sees her ex-husband. David tells her that he and his girlfriend have decided to get married. Maggie looks taken aback by this news but does her best to keep a straight face. Maggie asks if the kids already know but David tells her he wanted to tell her first before telling the kids. Maggie walks over to her mother's house to share the news but sees her and Rick happily talking. It turns out that they are now a couple. This seems to affect Maggie even more, thinking that everybody around her is getting into romance. First, her mom now has a boyfriend, her daughter has a crush, and now her ex-husband is getting remarried. Maggie tells her that everyone around seems to be capable of moving on except for her. Her mother says that it's good that she is independent and doesn't need a relationship, but there is nothing wrong with wanting one. Maggie agrees, thinking that she should give dating a try again, even wanting to bring a date to David's wedding. She emphasizes that she might need help as she has not been on a date for 20 years. The next morning, Maggie's mom excitedly tells her that she set up a blind date for Maggie with her friend's nephew. She arrives at the restaurant and tells the waiter that she's there to see a man named George. The waiter gives her an awkward grimace and leads her to George's table. George doesn't even stand up when he sees Maggie and is glued to his phone while eating. The waiter whispers to Maggie that George has already ordered his own dinner, leaving a not-so-good taste for a date but Maggie does her best to be nice. After ordering her own dinner, she sits down and asks George some questions, but George doesn't seem to be paying attention, as if finding his phone more interesting. They finish their dinner and the waiter asks them if they would like some coffee or dessert. They answer at the same time with Maggie politely declining while George asks for a tiramisu and excuses himself to go to the restroom. The second he's gone, the waiter immediately advises Maggie that she should leave, as if knowing already that they are just blind dates, even mentioning that everyone in the restaurant can tell. Maggie looks around only to see everyone else looking at her, agreeing she should go. The waiter helps her come up with an excuse and leads her outside. She thanks everyone and hurriedly walks out, lightly laughing at the amusing turn of events. The next day, Maggie sits in her car when Michael sees her. 
It turns out that Maggie has decided to sign up for a dating app and try her luck there. Coincidentally, Michael admits that he is on the same dating app, though he's not actively looking. Michael says he is a little surprised as Maggie previously said that she wasn't interested in dating after her divorce, but she says that things change, and she is looking at the app, hoping to get some dating advice as she just had a disastrous blind date. Learning this, Michael proposes if she wants to go on a practice date to help each other be better at dating and give each other helpful suggestions. Maggie agrees and they decide to go on a pretend date tonight at 7 in the evening. At the bakery, Maggie tells Devin about her blind date. Devin tells her that she has to get on some dating apps and promises to help her. Maggie also tells Devin that she's going on a pretend date with Michael. Devin instantly comments there is no such thing as a pretend date. Maggie's phone rings and it turns out that it's from Make It, Bake It, Cake It. They finally got accepted to be featured in the show, making the two jump with excitement. At home while sharing the good news to her mom, Emma asks permission from Maggie to go out. Maggie thinks it's with her friend but Emma says she'll be with Zach. Maggie hesitantly agrees as long as Emma comes home by 11. Maggie's mom comments how it's weird that all of them have dates that night, her with Rick, Emma with Zach, and Maggie with Michael. Maggie just finished getting ready when Michael comes to pick her up for their date. Maggie asks where they are going and Michael confesses he asked Gary about her likes and learned that she liked the food they had during a trip to New Orleans, so he decided to take her to a cafe called Cafe New Orleans. At the restaurant, they got the house special which they did not realize was a ton of crawfish. They both laugh as they both never had crawfish before. Meanwhile, Emma and Zach sit together awkwardly while having some snacks at the bowling alley. They try to start some small talk but then Emma senses they don't really have much in common to talk about so they spend their time mostly in silence. Back at the cafe, Michael and Maggie finished eating the crawfish. Michael asks Maggie why she's suddenly interested in dating. Maggie admits that she feels like everyone around her is moving forward but she isn't, especially after learning that David is getting remarried. Michael asks her if she's upset about the wedding announcement, asking if she feels like she and David might still get back together, but she quickly answers no. Although sounding petty, she says that she would like to bring a date to David's wedding, thinking she might feel better. Michael understands, saying she just wants to have somebody by her side for comfort and support as it would probably be very uncomfortable to see her ex-husband getting married. Maggie tells Michael that she got on the Make It, Bake It, Cake It show. He congratulates her and tells her they should not be having their dessert at the cafe when Maggie has her own bakery. Maggie happily invites him to the bakery and he gladly accepts the invitation. Back at the bowling alley, awkward silence is still in the atmosphere between Emma and Zach. Learning that she has to be home by 11 anyway, he asks if he can take off and meet with his friends instead. Emma tries to smile while saying it's okay. They look at each other for a few seconds, and Zach tries to lean in to kiss Emma, but then his phone rings and says he has to go, leaving Emma alone. Maggie and Michael arrive at the bakery and he sees a cake with bacon on top, amazed at the unusual combination. Maggie serves him a big piece of the bacon cake which he surprisingly liked. He asks Maggie how the bakery started and she tells him that it was after Emma was born and she became a stay-at-home mom. People started asking her to bake for them and when her kids got older, she started having more time and started researching about opening a bakery. David helped her secure a loan to open the bakery. Now she's even hoping to open a second location, emphasizing why it's so important for her to get into Make It. Bake It, Cake It as shops that get featured usually triple their profit after. Maggie also shares that she's worried if she's going to be interesting enough for the show. Mikhail assures her that her backstory is incredible. Maggie comments how she wishes she has Michael's confidence. Michael responds by offering to help her since he works in public relations anyway. Maggie happily accepts his help, grateful that he is willing to make time just to help her out. The pretend date ends and Michael walks her to her porch. Maggie says she had so much fun she almost forgot it was just a pretend date. He says that he can now say that Maggie knows how to date and can confidently go out into the dating world. She tells him she has decided that Michael is her barometer, an indicator that there are good guys out there that she could date. They say their good nights and then as he starts walking away, he slightly shakes his head at being called a barometer, seemingly disappointed. The next morning, Maggie tells Devin that after going on a pretend date, she thinks she's finally ready to go on a real date. Devin insists that what they had was a date, seeing how Michael picked her up, took her to dinner, spent hours with her and even paid for the dinner. Maggie argues that Michael was the one who specifically said it was a pretend date. Maggie also mentions that Michael offered to help her prepare for the show, convincing Devin more that he's interested in her. Maggie asks Devin to help her with online dating instead. Maggie has just finished setting up her dating profile where she used the profile name Cool Mom MD. Devin says people might think she is a doctor, but Maggie just says when they come to her for advice they will just discover that she isn't one. Devin reviews her profile and makes improvements. She also reminds Maggie that she has to be proactive as the right guy won't just come knocking. Coincidentally, Michael knocks at the bakery's window, calling Maggie's attention. It turns out that it's Will's half-birthday and he is stopping by to get a cheesecake for him. Michael mentions their pretend date saying it was really fun. 
He asks Maggie if she needs a little more dating practice, as if nonchalantly asking her out again but Maggie tells him that thanks to their practice date, she finally feels ready for a real one, even telling him she signed up for the dating app. Michael seems taken aback but tries to hide it and compliments her profile. Then, he tells her that if she wants to set up a practice session for the show, she could drop by his office and talk it through. At home, Emma and John are working on their chemistry project. They seem to be getting along really well, as they both keep throwing chemistry puns at each other. Then, Emma tells him she has to go for dinner with her dad tonight. John agrees and starts to get going but just before he walks out the door, he asks Emma if she's coming to the homecoming. Emma tells him she is coming and just waiting for Zach to ask her officially. That night, Maggie calls Devin, asking her what to do next with her dating app. She gets a wink from a guy named Steve. Devin tells her to look at the guy's profile to see if she likes him enough to wink back. Devin also asks her if she wants to have a girls' night on Friday which Maggie gladly accepts. She bids Devin goodbye as she notices her kids just came home from dinner with their dad. She asks Emma how it went. Emma looks disappointed, saying their dad didn't make any effort and just ordered pizza. She also tells her mom that David already told them about getting remarried. Maggie asks how she feels about it and she says that her dad has been away for a while so the news didn't surprise her anymore, but Gary doesn't seem fine about it. Emma asks her mom why she and her dad even got married in the first place. Maggie tells her that they were young and in love back then and had lots of similarities, but they grew far apart. Emma asks her how she knew that she liked him. Maggie tells her that it's not going to be the same for everyone but she and her dad had common interests, good communication with each other, similar sense of humor and other things. Maggie also tells Emma that she thinks Emma wants a gentleman who treats her well, and knows how capable she is and lets her be herself. Emma gets a text and giggles upon reading it. Maggie asks if it was Zach but it turns out that it's from John who sent her a science meme, shows it to Maggie, which she finds funny too. Devin and Maggie's girls' night comes and Devin picks up Maggie. Devin grabs her mail for her and hands them out to Maggie. She looks at the envelopes and sees David's wedding invitation. Devin asks her if she's alright and Maggie responds enthusiastically saying that if David found his soulmate, maybe tonight she'll find hers. The moment they walk into the bar, a guy named Isaac approaches them, asking if they want to join him and his friend to play foosball, which they immediately accept. They spend the night playing pool and other games at the bar and Maggie seems to be really enjoying it. She also notices that Devin and Isaac seem to be getting along really well. Moments later, Maggie comes home. She checks her phone and sees the dating app and winks back at Steve. Then, she receives a call from Michael. He asks if she is available for a practice session tomorrow to prepare for her feature at Make It. Bake It, Cake It and Maggie agrees. Michael notices that Maggie seems a little distracted and asks her if she's alright. Maggie shares that the day has just been weird with her receiving David's invitation and going out tonight, and now she's craving some spring rolls. Michael offers to distract her and asks her to open her laptop and calls her there to play some game where they look for random photos in their phones with every category they mention. The two of them are having so much fun until Maggie mentions the category favorite family photo. Michael shows a photo of his family before his wife passed away. Maggie apologizes but he assures her it's okay. Then, Maggie hears the doorbell ring, wondering who it could be as it's already late. Michael tells her he's gonna let her go for the night and tells her bon appetit, making Maggie wonder. She comes to the door and surprisingly sees a bag of food. It turns out that Michael ordered her the spring rolls she is craving for. The next day, Maggie and Michael meets at his office to talk about her upcoming feature at Make It Bake It Cake It. Michael shows Maggie a studio he set up as a replica of her bakery to help her be more comfortable during her presentation. Maggie is amazed at how thoughtful Michael is and for putting so much effort. Then, they try to do practice questions and Michael helps her phrase her answers to be more interesting. Meanwhile, Emma is at the bowling alley with Zach, John and her friend. John sees how cold Zach treats her and confronts Emma, asking her why she likes him despite treating her like that. Emma gets irked by this and tells John it's none of his business. The next day, the boys came back after an early morning fishing trip. Maggie and Michael help each other prepare the fish they caught while their kids wait at the table, watching them throw fish jokes at each other. After the meal, Michael and Maggie are talking about their kids by the kitchen when her phone beeps. She checks it and turns out, it's the guy from the dating app, Steve, who agreed to have a date with her. Michael looks taken aback by this and tries to act normally. Maggie's date day with Steve comes and they go to a wine tasting event. Steve tells her how he was a little intimidated when he saw that her profile says she is an MD, or a medical doctor but Maggie explains that she isn't an MD, and it's just her initials. Maggie tries to throw jokes at Steve but he doesn't seem to get her jokes at all, making their date very awkward. Steve is a very serious and straightforward person and for some reason, Maggie doesn't seem to vibe well with him but still tries her best. Steve asks her if she wants to go to a private classical concert with him and Maggie agrees. One night, Maggie invites Michael over to teach him how to bake her favorite chocolate chip cookies as her way of thanking him for helping her. It's pouring outside and while they're baking, the power suddenly goes out. They decide to just sit and have a cup of coffee while waiting for the power to come back. 
Michael asks about her date and she tells him it was just okay. She then asks him how his dating life is but he says that he's not ready to take that leap yet after his wife passed away. He then tells Maggie that when he does wink at somebody on that dating app, he's gonna make sure that it's somebody who really interests him. The next morning, Michael's secretary hands him a box of chocolate chip cookies which Michael instantly knew is from Maggie. His secretary sees his phone on that table which has Maggie's dating app profile. She exclaims that she always knew Michael likes Maggie. She tells Michael to go for it, saying she is absolutely interested in him. Then, Michael finally winks at Maggie. At the kids' game, Maggie enthusiastically cheers for Gary and Will. Their team wins and she congratulates the two. Gary notices that his dad is not present at his game again and gets frustrated. At the bakery, David walks in after Maggie calls him to talk. He tries to take a piece of cupcake and as he is about to eat it, she tells him he will have to pay for it. David asks if she's being serious and Maggie tells her she is very serious. David reminds her that he paid for the bakery when it was being remade but Maggie quickly shuts him down by saying he only helped secure a loan, but she did everything else. She also points out that when they ended their marriage, he wanted nothing to do with the bakery so he got his wish. David thinks Maggie is done talking but as he is about to walk out, Maggie stops him. She tells him that from now on she will be making decisions that are best for her and their kids, pointing out that he has let them down so many times. She hands out a schedule she prepared, outlining his responsibilities to the kids, demanding that he needs to make his schedule work around their kids' schedule and not the other way around. She tells him that their kids love him and they just want to spend time with him. David acknowledges this and promises to do better. Shoot day comes and the show's production starts setting up. The shoot goes very well and Michael being there behind the camera seems to have helped Maggie stay confident. After the shoot, Maggie thanks Michael for his help and he just says he will do anything for her. Maggie asks him if that is the reason he winked at her on the dating app. Michael tells her that he winked at her because he wanted to let her know that he is there if ever she wants to go on a date, whether for a pretend date or a real one. At school, Emma tells her friend how she is thinking of not going to the homecoming as Zach hasn't asked her yet. Then, in the hallway, they see Zach asking another girl out to be his date, hurting Emma's feelings. Maggie and Steve's second date at the classical concert comes and Maggie still feels that awkward vibe with Steve. He still doesn't get any of her jokes and even tells her that the place is not a proper setting for a joke, also saying how puns are the lowest form of humor which sounded so mean especially for Maggie who loves puns. Her phone rings and she tells him she has to take it as it's her kids, which doesn't seem to interest Steve at all. She goes back to her seat at the concert and tries sharing what happened to Steve but he just comments it sounds unimportant. The next day, Maggie tells Devin how uncomfortable the date was, and it turns out that she has ended it with Steve after that. Maggie tells her that if somebody finds her and it's meant to be then it will be. Devin then tells her that if it's meant to be with Michael, she should go wink back at him already. She gets her phone and winks back at Michael but finds out she's waited too long already, as Michael is no longer in the app. The day when her feature in Make It Bake It Cake It airs and Maggie holds a viewing party at her home with all her loved ones. The doorbell rings and Gary gets the door. It turns out it's John, looking for Emma, finally mustering up the courage to ask Emma out to be his date for the homecoming, confessing that he really likes her. Emma smiles through his very nervous and awkward confession and says yes. Then, just like her mom, starts throwing some more puns at him. Emma's family sees them happy together and is very pleased. Michael arrives just as the show starts and they smile at each other. The show was successful and everyone celebrates. Michael approaches Maggie and hands out a gift to her. She opens it and finds a barometer. Michael explains that he is giving it to her as he doesn't want to be her barometer anymore. He doesn't want to be the guy that indicates that there are good guys, he wants to be the guy that she dates and laughs together with their corny jokes. He even wants to be the guy that she brings to her ex-husband's wedding. Maggie looks at him so lovingly and then they finally kiss each other. The last scene takes us to David's wedding, where Maggie and Michael are dancing together and kissing each other. Maggie expresses how glad she is to be with Michael there. Then they throw more corny jokes at each other, laughing together as if they don't even have to try to understand each other's puns. 